Frustrations and trust often lie very close together when it comes to traffic sign recognition. We already saw this in the first video of the series. Back in that part, we looked at how the system works, what its limits are, and how we perceive it. Today, the focus is on practical use. On the everyday handling of intelligent speed assistance or adoption, short ESA. What the system displays, how to interpret the symbols, how ESA interacts with other assistance systems, how to decline systems initiated speed changes, and where to report map data errors. Welcome to Electrified Speicher, your channel all around Skoda's e mobility. ISA, as already said, stands for Intelligent Speed Adoption, sometimes some people say assistance, and is part of the EU safety requirements for new vehicles. The system is designed to support road safety and environmental uh, objectives by warning you when you exceed the permitted speed and in certain configuration by slightly limiting the vehicle's speed. The basis for all of this is the EU regulation 2019-2144 and its associated delegated act. Since July 2022, ISA has been mandatory for new vehicle types and since July 2024 for all newly registered vehicles in the EU. The EU, however, does not prescribe a specific technical implementation. Manufacturers may use different types of warning and all variants can be overridden by the driver. Traffic sign recognition and ISA are not the same. ISA builds on top of traffic sign recognition by using this information to generate warnings or limits. They are two systems working together by serving different purposes. Traffic sign recognition is also used by other systems in your car, such as Travel Assist or the Predictive Adaptive Cruise Control. Now let's take a look at how Skoda has implemented all of this. Let's look at the display in the cockpit and the head-up display first. The system recognizes permanent and temporary speed limits, additional restrictions such as limits in wet conditions or at certain times, or overtaking prohibitions, driving prohibitions such as one-way rules and various warning signs, for example roadworks or slippery surfaces and displays them in your cockpit. On a German motorway without a speed limit, the unrestricted speed symbol is displayed as well. And if a trailer or accessory is detected via the trailer socket, the system additionally shows trailer relevant traffic signs. As already explained in the first part of the series, three sources of information come together here. The legal regulations of the country you're driving in, the camera based recognition and map data. These sources also determine the color coding of the ISA icon symbol in the display. Green means active with all data available. White means that no map data is available. White with the label off indicates that the system has been deactivated and yellow indicates a malfunction or temporary limitation. Due to EU regulations, ISA is automatically activated after every restart of your car. Permanent deactivation is not intended and thus not available. If you want to switch off ISA, you can, but you must do so manually. All ENIAC and LROC models offer these functions in the assistance settings. From software version 4 onwards and therefore in all current vehicles with software version 5, ISA can also be switched off and on <laughs> via the favorites bar in the upper left corner. Just add the icon there and a single tap is sufficient once the function has been placed there. Voice control can be used some sort of, but if you want to switch ESA off, the system requires a manual confirmation on the display, so I do not recommend voice control here. ISA provides several warning levels. Due to regulatory requirements, these levels are not permanently saved again and are not currently linked to the user profiles as well. They must therefore be set again at the start of your car over and over again. I'm sorry about that. The default level operates with a small tolerance. According to the ENIAC manual, this tolerance is 3% plus 1 km per hour above the permitted limit. 
In practice, this would mean at a limit of 50, the warning occurs at around 53. And a limit of 80 kilometers an hour would mean a warning occur at 84 kilometers an hour or higher. In addition to the default setting, there are two fixed alternatives. A warning 5 kilometers per hour above the limit and a warning 10 kilometers per hour above the limit. The EU regulation allows four basic types of feedback when you exceed the speed. Haptic feedback at the accelerator pedal, a slight automatic reduction of engine power, a staged optical acoustic warning or a combination of optical indication and pedal vibration. In the Enyax and Elrox we find the third variant. I assume Skoda shows the optic acoustic approach because it is clear enough without actively intervening in the drivetrain and providing thus the most convenient way possible due to the regulation. ISA displays recognized traffic signs and issues a warning when the limit is exceeded. ISA does not itself adapt the vehicle speed though. Automatic adjustment only occurs when other systems are involved. The predictive adaptive cruise control, the speed limiter or the travel assist. For beginners I recommend part 2 of my e-guide on assistant systems where I explain these function, how they work together in every detail. But just for short. If predictive adaptive cruise control or travel assist is active and a different speed is detected and displayed in white, the suggested speed can be declined. To do so, pull the cruise control lever towards you, just a single tap. The vehicle will then continue with the previously set or previously recognized speed. But keep in mind, this is no longer possible once the displayed speed turns fully green or when the vehicle takes over the change immediately. I assume that forced adaption occurs when the system determines that there is no longer a sufficient time left for a safe deceleration and the new speed must be applied without delay. If the predictive adaptive cruise control or the travel assist suggests a speed that differs from the stored one, again displayed in white, you can adapt it immediately by pushing the cruise control lever short upwards, just a tap. The vehicle then adjusts to the newly set speed immediately, not waiting until it should apply. Sometimes errors occur in the map data. A large proportion of corrections and updates most likely originates from official sources I guess, which includes data from authorities and other partners who are required to report those root changes. But nevertheless, users can contribute by reporting errors as well. These reports can be submitted via the link which I provide down in the video description to the Skoda portal. The portal forwards you then to the here map creator where incorrect entries can be submitted so to correct them. An account is required to submit the changes though. Uh, according to the feedback from my community there is also no guarantee that a change will be adopted and it has been reported to me multiple times that it may take several months until the update becomes visible in the vehicle. ISA and traffic sign recognition have clear advantages but also clear limitations. The warning function itself is uncritical. In the worst case it's annoying but it does not compromise safety. It becomes critical when an assistance system automatically adopts a speed based on incorrect information. A sudden deceleration on the motorway can create dangerous situations. Sometimes there is hardly enough time for the driver to react because the vehicle may already begun braking or accelerating. But speed is often underestimated as well. Between 100 and 120 km per hour there is a difference of only 20 km per hour, but the vehicle covers several additional meters every second. Reaction time remains the same, yet the distance the vehicle travels during that time increases noticeably. Braking distance grows quadratically when speed doubles, so it becomes significantly longer as speed increases. This is why speed limits are not an optional guideline. They are part of a system designed for collective safety. However, 
This is, of course, only my personal view of this. For me, speed limits, assistance systems and EU regulations and safety requirements make sense because they actively contribute to road safety. From my perspective, the benefit of ISA clearly outweighed the drawbacks. Used correctly, it is a system that improves situational awareness, supports safer driving and reduces risk, even if it's not perfect. I hope this practical part helped you understand ISA and the associated systems more clearly in everyday use. Together with part 1, you should now have a complete overview of the system operating in your ENIAC or LROC. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed that video, please give it a thumbs up. Consider to subscribe to the channel so you do not miss out any new video and check the video description for ways to support the channel. Thanks a lot. See you in the next video and until then, stay full of energy.